Okay, I'd like to go through with you now the muscles of the neck and the face. So I'm going to roll my rat over. So I'm looking at the, the ventral side and I've gone ahead and, and skinned, completed skinning the face and neck. I've also removed the glands uh, that I found, um, the glands that are here underneath the neck. So I've, I've removed them and uh, now I'm ready to look at the muscles. And we start out with the most the most noticeable ones, those being the sternomastoid and the clitomastoid. And these are analogous to the sternocleidomastoid on the human, on people. They come down uh, from just behind the ears and insert into the sternum. The most medial one here is the sternomastoid. And then immediately outside of it is a muscle that's actually called the cleidocervicalis, and then if I go between those two, I find the cleidomastoid. So there's three muscles in a row here, sternomastoid, and then I got to dig a little bit, and I got the cleidomastoid, and then the uh, cervico, the cleidocervicalis, or clavotrapezius is another name for that. Looking at the very front here, the two very noticeable muscles right down the front of the throat in front of the trachea are the sternohyoids. And if I go between my sternomastoid and the sternohyoid, there's a little diagonal muscle that runs kind of catty corner here. That's called the omohyoid. And then looking up underneath the jaw, I've got a muscle on either side. This muscle here is the caudal end of the digastric. The digastric muscle is divided into two sections. This is the caudal digastric. And then right up underneath his chin, there are two muscles. And these are the cranial digastric muscles. So the digastric, caudal digastric here, cranial digastric here. And then the last muscle that we're concerned with here on the front of the rat in the neck and the face is the big masseter, that very large muscle that makes up the cheek. And the rat obviously uses that for chewing, just like we do. So quick review, these large V-shaped muscles in the front, cladomastoid, sternomastoid, and cladocervicalis or clavotrapezius, same name. Sternohyoid, right in the middle. Omohyoid to the side of it. Immediately above that, we have the caudal belly of the digastric muscle. Underneath the chin is the cranial belly of the digastric muscle. And then on the side, we have the masseter. Now moving down to the chest to kind of orient ourselves. Again, a lot of a lot of dissection dissection when it comes to muscles is just getting rid of all of this, very patiently getting rid of all of this connective tissue. This, this thin white connective tissue that just covers the whole thing. Uh, on the outside of the shoulder here, on either side. You have the cleidobrachialis, but in the chest, our primary chest muscles are the pectoralis muscles, and there are three of those. The pectoralis superficialis is what would be analogous to the pectoralis major on us, and that's right here in the upper chest. Immediately below that is the pectoralis profundus. And there's actually two branches or two sections of the pectoralis profundus. One here 
and then another one right below and inferior to it. So Pectoralis superficialis, Pectoralis profundus, and this is the other belly of the Pectoralis profundus. Looking at the muscles of the back and the shoulder, the large muscle in the back here, the very large muscle that forms the back of the shoulders is the trapezius. And on the rat, we can actually divide that into three different sections. The bottom section here is the thoracic trapezius. It gets its name because it originates off of the thoracic vertebrae. Immediately cranial to that is the broad, flat cervical trapezius gets its name because it originates off of the cervical vertebrae. And then when we looked at the muscles in the neck, we looked at the third part, which is the clavotrapezius, clavotrapezius, which is also called the clidocervicalis. Large muscle coming down, crossing the back of the shoulder here, kind of runs diagonal. This is the spinodeltoid. On the rat, we actually divide the deltoid into two parts, the spinodeltoid on the back and the sternodeltoid on the front. This is the spinodeltoid or the back part of it. Immediately cranial to it, you see here again, you should recognize that as the cervical trapezius. And then below the cervical trapezius, kind of between it and that spinodeltoid is one of our rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus, sits right in there. Coming back behind the shoulder, we notice a large flat muscle that runs down the back of the rat. This muscle is the latissimus dorsi. Obviously it's analogous to the latissimus dorsi on our bodies. And then in front of that latissimus dorsi, you have two muscles, the serratus muscles. The one up here that sits underneath the armpit is the serratus ventralis. Again, it gets its name because it's got this serrated edge, originates off of the front of the shoulder blade or the scapula and inserts into the ribs. That's the serratus ventralis. On us, it's analogous to the serratus anterior. The naming is different because the uh, rats walk on four legs, we walk on two legs, so what is our anterior side is the rat's ventral side. So instead of the serratus anterior, like it's named on humans, it's named the serratus ventralis on the rat. And then back behind that, you have another band of serrated tissue. This is the serratus dorsalis, and there's not a serratus dorsalis on the human body. Underneath the uh, armpit, you can't see it on this side, but if I roll him over, there's going to be a big flap of muscle, and this flap of muscle you should recognize. Let me get rid of some of this connective tissue. This flap of muscle here you should recognize as what's left of the cutaneous trunchi. Uh, that muscle was connected or inserts into the undersurface of the skin, and you had to cut through that muscle when you skinned your rat. Um, but that's what's left there of that cutaneous trunchi, and remember it's the muscle that allows the rat to move its skin independent of its body. Looking at the arm of the rat, again, I want to orient myself. I've got the cervical trapezius right here. I've got my spinodeltoid right here. The big large muscle that makes up the back of this rat's arm is the triceps brachii. Triceps means three heads, and we can actually appreciate two of the three heads on this specimen. The back one here is the long head, and then the shorter one here on the outside is the lateral head. But those are two parts of the triceps brachii. And remember, the triceps is responsible for extending the elbow, and this is kind of a cool little muscle because if you grab it and pull, you actually see that action. You can actually move that rat's arm, almost like a puppet. In the front of the shoulder, I've got a little bulge of muscle here. Again, Easy to orient myself from the cervical trapezius 
right in front of the cervical trapezius, this little ball of muscle here is called the clidobrachialis, the clidobrachialis. And the clidobrachialis uh, forms another part of what in humans we would recognize as the deltoid muscle. It forms the middle part or the, the lateral part of the deltoid muscle. And then on the very front of his arm, again, just a little bit of connective tissue here to get rid of. If I pull that triceps back, you can see sitting right in here, uh, you've got a nice view of his biceps brachii, which isn't, isn't near as large as the triceps brachii. The biceps brachii is on the front of the, fore, or front of the, the uh, humerus.